Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry Peacock. I'm here to do a recap and review of the brand new DC animated film, The Doom That Came to Gotham, based on the 2015 comic miniseries by Mike Mignola, if I'm saying that correctly, and Troy Nilksey. So, as it begins, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson are on the site of some type of Arctic expedition during the Prohibition era, where everybody on the boat died when the boat got stuck in the ice, seemingly including Professor Oswald Cobblepot, who of course is a penguin. They find his diary, and in it, he talks about encountering something out there that was ominous, that told him he was home. And Bruce even finds him out in the ice, naked and running around, but he disappears into a cavern. Bruce enters the cavern and finds another member of the crew who has deliberately blinded himself, who says he's no longer who he was and that he's now a servant of something called Yib Nagorith that slathers outside time and space, which apparently has three eyes and which apparently lives there in the cave and has been there for millennia. Bruce tries to get this crew member to leave, but he won't. And then Bruce is attacked by something resembling demon penguins. Then the crew member chops at the ice and frees part of the creature, which slithers inside of him through his mouth. And Bruce ends up having to fire a flare in order to get out from underneath a bunch of the attacking penguin bird things before he ends up putting the crew member down with a swift punch to the face when the crew member tried to attack him. But before the guy passes out, he issues a prophetic warning about something that's coming. Bruce then has the cave sealed off with a bunch of explosives and assumes that Oswald is dead, but he isn't, which we know because we see him watching Bruce as his party departs. It turns out that the crew member whose name is Grendon and whom Bruce's party, which includes not only Dick, but someone named Sanjay and a young lady named Kylie, is bringing back to Gotham with them is undead. From the reading of Cobblepot's diary, we learn that some type of cult is connected to all of this and that it's come to Gotham. Speaking of Gotham, apparently Bruce has been absent from there for over a decade, possibly two, while he's been traveling the world with Dick and company. Before the story progresses, we see a flashback to the scene of Bruce's parents' murder. And this time, the guy who did it rants about some kind of curse just before he kills Bruce's parents. It further turns out that Bruce hasn't been Batman yet, although he's been preparing for it. And when he gets home, he finds that Lucius Fox, upon Bruce's direction, has set up a bunch of stuff that Bruce has sent him in the cave under the house, which they keep referring to as the wine cellar. Soon after getting back into the house, Bruce and Dick discover a corpse that's been dumped there and which causes Bruce to have a vision of it saying that its name is Langstrom before Bruce is visited by Jason Blood, who, of course, is also the demon Etrigan who tells him that he has to meet three spirits, that he has to die, and that Gotham must burn to the ground before things can be set right. Then Oliver Queen, a.k.a. Green Arrow, hosts Bruce and company for dinner, and they're joined by Harvey Dent. After dinner, they all discuss the fact that Langstrom had claimed to be a bat, which, of course, we know was eventually true in the comics because he's man-bat. Back on the boat, Sanjay, who got stuck watching the corpse, finds himself annoyed by said corpse. While Dick stays at Oliver's house for the night, with Kai Lee. While Alfred continues airing out Wayne Manor, Bruce takes to the rooftops as Batman, where he comes across a couple of crooked cops looking for valuables at the crime scene of Langstrom's apartment, where Batman also finds a lot of occult stuff, which he examines with a cigarette lighter type device attached to a blue light, which is pretty cool. He finds Langstrom's diaries, which details his descent into what would appear to be madness, exemplified by his rantings about some kind of mystical force or being, and how there's only one way to stop it. And it turns out that this whole thing is tied to a book called The Testament of Ghoul that Cobblepot had. Apparently, it was supposed to have been destroyed at Cobblepot's direction, but the gentleman who was supposed to destroy it declined to do so, and he's been keeping it in the safe in a university repository where he's visited by Talia al Ghul, who kills him by causing a creature to crawl into his ear just before Batman crashes through the window demanding the book from her. She declines to turn it over and instead sicks a giant fire creature on him that used to be the guy that she just killed after she put something in his ear. While Batman is battling the creature, Etrigan shows up to take over the fight as Batman flees. He then catches up with Talia, who is apparently 112 years old, and demands the book again, saying that he will stop the cult of a ghoul from whatever it's up to. 
And she says that the cult is gone, that she's the only remaining member. And then she hits Batman with a vial of some kind of drug that makes him wobbly. She then sicks a different giant creature on him that really resembled Killer Croc, after saying that she doesn't intend Gotham any harm, only Batman. Batman ends up escaping from this creature after luring it to the train tracks, whereupon it gets hit by a train but isn't killed as Batman grapples away. Somehow, Bruce's boat in the harbor is frozen, even though it's June. And speaking of the boat, on the boat, Sanjay has apparently been frozen to death, and the corpse has escaped, but not before also apparently infecting Dick, who had discovered the deceased Sanjay. Meanwhile, Talia magically summons her father, Rachel Ghoul, from the dead, and we learn that her fiery demon managed to imprison Etrigan in a bottle like a gin during their fight. Apparently, in this reality, Rachel Ghoul is a dark priest who's been trying for centuries to bring some kind of evil god into the world from some type of nether realm. Following the trail he's uncovered in his investigation, Batman heads under the city into various tunnels where he finds Raish and Talia engaging in some kind of ceremony, at which point Batman again has to fight the creature that he had earlier managed to get away from on the train tracks, and this time he hit him with a vial of some type of chlorine compound that completely dissolved him. He then has to fight Talia hand-to-hand, -hand, and while he's fighting her, he hears Etrigan calling out from inside the bottle he's been trapped in. Unfortunately, Raish is able to complete the ritual during the fight and sends Batman hurling even further below the city into a pit of green ooze by attacking with a whole bunch of conjured snakes and lizards. When he emerges from under the city, he has a flashback to just after his parents were killed when he encountered the bats that made him decide to become Batman, at which time he also apparently encountered some kind of bat spirit, which told him that the only thing that can defeat the coming doom is a bat. We then learn that Harvey Dent's been elected mayor and that somehow all the serpents and whatnot magically disappeared after a time. We then learn that it turns out that the corpse guy is the key to opening the door that will bring forth the doom, or at least that it was contained within him after being put there by Yib Nagoreth, the creature in the ice from the beginning. So Raish extracts it and the corpse guy melts into a goo, which then becomes a hot lady when it comes into contact with whatever was inside the corpse. The hot lady evil thing, who's apparently Poison Ivy, approaches the mayor, and he ends up touching her hand. We then find out that Oliver Queen's father was over 300 years old when he died, after having made some kind of pact with the devil, according to Oliver, which led him to kill Bruce's parents, and that Oliver Queen is some kind of holy knight who believes that it's his job to protect Gotham from the doom because his father had some hand in creating it. Batman then visits Langstrom's corpse, and it talks to him somehow, but he can't seem to understand what it's telling him about how to stop the doom. The hot lady demon person shows up to kill Oliver, but he hits her in the head with a knife, and it transforms into a hell of an ugly demon that he's eventually able to put down, but not before it mortally wounds him. He then manages to confess to Bruce about what his father did and give Bruce some kind of special knife before he dies. Kylie tries to tell Bruce that he doesn't have to try to be the savior of the city, but he explains that he knows she doesn't really feel that way because she, like him, is the kind of person who would run into a burning building to save people rather than run away and call for help once they were safe. Then Commissioner Gordon approaches Bruce to tell Bruce that some ghost that his wheelchair-bound daughter Barbara is in contact with as the Oracle needs to talk to him, and this ghost is apparently the spirit wrapped in flames that Bruce was told about earlier. Bruce heads out to meet with Barbara in Arkham for some reason in a steampunk-type Batmobile, and he leaves Kylie in charge of the Batcave, which, as I said, they keep referring to as the wine cellar. Barbara summons the spirit for Batman, and it causes him to have a vision of his father still alive while he himself is still a boy. His father explains that he was born in the 1500s and came to America with the Pilgrims, whereupon he founded Gotham along with his fellow Pilgrims, including Oliver's father, Langstrom, and Oswald Cobblepot the latter of whom discovered a book buried underground, which they read from and thereby performed a ritual which blessed them all with eternal life and which caused the colony to flourish. He then tells Bruce that he has to prevent the doom from coming with the help of bats. So Bruce himself performs a ritual which puts him in contact with the bat spirit that tells him where to find the door. Upon reaching the door, he finds Harvey Dent guarding it and that Harvey's been turned into Two-Face by having touched the evil demon lady who, as I said, was apparently Poison Ivy. Then he goes through this door and seems to be in some other realm where he's confronted by the corpses of Oliver Queen and a couple of other weird corpse creatures that have apparently been made out of Sanjay and Dick, all of which he manages to put down with Oliver's special arrows. 
Further down into this realm, Bruce finds Raish conducting a ritual with Talia standing guard and then gets into a fist fight with Talia, who also uses a bit of magic against him. But he manages to kill her with his grapple gun after she pushes him over a ledge and he uses it to climb back up, sending it right through her in the process. He then confronts Raish, but not before he opens the door and the doom comes through. Immediately after which, Batman runs Raish through with the special knife, which doesn't kill him, however. It just knocks off his arm, which is soon replaced with a tentacle type thing, before Raish himself turns into actual Cthulhu and puts the hurt on Batman as the Gotham sky turns red under a blood moon. Batman then seems to completely surrender himself to the spirit of the bat, becoming an actual bat creature himself and declaring that he is Batman after which he rips an arm off Cthulhu before engaging him in a physical fight, during which he bites Cthulhu on the neck, causing him to transform into a beam of green light, which ascends upward towards the Doom creature, seemingly becoming part of it, and then it emits some kind of noise that pretty much cripples Bruce, but then he releases Etrigan from his bottle and he confronts the Doom as Batman flies away. But the confrontation causes a crazy fire to erupt underneath all of Gotham, seemingly fulfilling part of the prophecy about Gotham burning. Months later, after Gotham has apparently survived, there's some kind of memorial service for Bruce and Harvey, at which Kylie apparently takes the helm of Wayne Enterprises and vows to realize Bruce's vision for Gotham. Just before the story ends, we see Bruce, as the bat creature, Batman, hanging in the belfry of a Gotham clock tower while Kylie proclaims that she knows that Bruce is still watching over Gotham, waiting for it to need his help. And that's where it ended. So I don't really know <laughs> what to say about this film it is very strange it's you know what it's very lovecraftian i mean cthulhu is straight out of lovecraft for example so if you're a fan of lovecraft horror which i kind of am but it's not my horror jam if you know what i mean like i watch it because it's creepy and cool but i don't really get it it's just weird to me my wife is a much bigger fan of Lovecraft's work she gets it better than I do but you know it's just creepy weird it's creepy weird and it doesn't comport with any other kind of horror so it it borders on nonsense to me usually and and that's kind of how I found this so it's entertaining in that it creeps you out and it freaks out your brain but it's it's not my jam and I say that as someone who played the video game Eternal Darkness which of course is all based on Lovecraft, which I thoroughly enjoyed. But if you asked me to tell you what the heck happened in that game, I couldn't tell you. I don't think I ever knew. I only know that it was creepy and I got to fight demons and stuff and it was fun. But once again, not my usual horror jam. I, I'm not a Lovecraft devotee, I guess you could say. So I didn't love this. But, you know, I didn't hate it. It's a very interesting story, a very different take on Batman. I mean, he literally turns into a bat. It presents a completely different take on Oliver Queen and, you know, the founding fathers of Gotham, which includes Penguin in this story. So it's cool on that level. The steampunk element of it made it different and cool. And I was intrigued by the character of Kylie. And, you know, it presented a different take on Ra's al Ghul, because apparently he was hundreds of years old or whatever. And... Well, I suppose we knew that because of the Lazarus pits in the original comic, but that's not part of this for some reason. So he's just like some sort of immortal being, but he did eventually die and then was brought back to life from the ether, not by putting his body in a pit. He was conjured from like an afterworld or some other realm. It's very strange. So all of that was interesting and fun, but the story didn't really resonate with even though it sort of presented a Batman who gave his all for Gotham and who was connected to the spirit of the bat, which, you know, is kind of like the speed force in the Flash comics, I guess, which is something else I also never really got or liked. So, you know, I can't rave about this. I can say, again, if you're a fan of Lovecraft, this movie is for you. You will love it. If you're not, you might like it somewhat because it's weird and crazy stuff happens <laughs> and it's a different take on the batman you know thing which you know can always be entertaining on a certain level but i can't say that it was any 
great shakes. And, you know, the original comic is probably better because that's often the case when comics and novels and stuff get adapted into films or TV shows. So you might also want to read that. I haven't. I didn't know it existed before this movie came out. Before the trailer came out, I should say. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much my review. It's it's an entertaining watch, but I didn't think it was any great shakes, especially because the voice cast, you know, uh, for, for one thing, is not remarkable. I, of course, prefer Kevin Conroy as Batman, but there have been other people who played him that I thought did a decent job or a pretty good job. But all of the voice acting in this is pretty bland. None of the voices stand out except maybe Raish and Talia Ghoul. So it wasn't great on a casting front either. But anyway, that's really all I have to say. It's worth a watch, but nothing great. So I'm going to get out of here for now. Until I return with some other review or video, I wish you peace and long life. Thank <laughs> you.